Recently, while looking online, I came across the $300 laser cutter on Wish, and I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder what this could actually cut or engrave. So, I decided to buy it. This is the Atomstack A5 Pro 40 watt laser cutter slash engraver from Wish that you can buy for approximately $284 or even less depending on the day. Now, before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about what this is and what it isn't. Yes, this is a laser cutter and engraver. However, it is not 40 watts. Instead, it really generates around 5, maybe 5.5 five watts of cutting power. The 40 watts that it says in the description really is about how much power it's consuming. It's not the cutting power. Secondly, this is a diode laser, which means it's going to be much weaker than something as a CO2 laser that has a big tube and has a, some mirrors that lines up the laser and is really meant for heavy cutting. This isn't. This really falls more on the spectrum of being an engraver rather than a cutter. Now the one thing I want to preference this with is that this is not a review of this particular machine. If you want a review of that, I'll be more than happy to do that. This right here is just to see what a $300 laser will actually cut, what it can do, and what it can't do. So before I go any further, I got to say this. What I'm about to show you, do not try at home. Do not try this at home. Let's go ahead and get started looking at what a $300 laser from Wish can and cannot do. Up first is a piece of cardboard courtesy of the United States Postal Service. It's pretty strong cardboard and I'm using the cutter at full power at 1000 millimeters per minute along with making two passes. It's about 1.6 millimeters in thickness. Also all laser cutters have to have the laser focused to ensure the beam accurately cuts or engraves. You take this piece of acrylic and place it on top of the material that's being cut. Then you lower the laser and tighten it. This makes sure that the distance between the material and the beam is accurate. As the machine cuts, you want to try and make sure the beam can cut fully through the material if you're doing a cutting. As you can see, we're cutting out Bigfoot. Bigfoot was easy to be cut out. So let's go ahead and move on to the next material. For this, let's try another piece of cardboard, but a little bit thicker at around two millimeters and it has this glossy finish on one side. Let's see if we can cut this Twinkie box using the same settings as before. This is really strong cardboard. Let's try cutting out Bigfoot again. Everything seems to be going pretty well. Doesn't look like there's any excessive charring or burning. Bigfoot out here. Well, that was easy. Another success for the cutter. For this test, I have this small piece of plastic known as FRP. This is a really flexible material, and this is around 1.6 millimeters in thickness. Now, this is going to have some really nasty and toxic fumes, so laser cutters should always be used with a fume extractor or at least in a highly ventilated area like a garage with the door open, which is what I'm doing. Now I'm doing five passes and it's definitely etching the outline. After five passes you can see the charring. Nope, the cutter couldn't go fully through the material. So that was a fail. Ever burned a DVD? Well, today that's what we're going to try by cutting a blank DVD. Why not? This is 1.3 millimeters thick. We're going to try to do five passes because it's really thick. Let's see how this works. Ooh. 
Whoa, this is really charring on the first round, even after the focusing. It smells pretty horrible too. Once again, this is why ventilation is necessary. This thing is so ashy and burned. However, it didn't cut all the way through. Came close, but not all the way. That's a fail. This time, let's try something not so dense, like this 5mm thick foam board. I got this foam board from the Dollar Tree, and it's good for hobbies. However, because it's not very dense and probably highly flammable, I'm just going to adjust the speed to 30% and do only 4 passes. So far it looks like a very clean cut. However, it does look like it may take more than 4 passes to cut cleanly through this because it's not getting all the way to the bottom. I'm starting to see a lot more smoke as it wraps up the first pass. A lot more. Whoa, 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 that's on fire, hang on. Just put this out real quick. There we go, wow. That stinks so bad. Well, that didn't work, so foam board is a failure on this laser. Alright, let's change things up by doing some engraving in glass. This piece of glass is from a picture frame that I purchased at the Dollar Tree again. The thing to remember with this engraver is that it uses a blue laser, so technically it just shines right through the glass, and it can't engrave glass. Or can it? I'm going to be using this tempera black paint to paint over the surface. Let's give this a few coats of paint on the side the laser is going to hit. I'm going to put the power around 700 millimeters per minute and power 60%. Now we just wait. Alright, five hours later, here's the results. As you can see, it's got an outline of a geometric cat. I think it looks pretty good. Really good, in fact. But I have to rinse all the paint off. This paint comes off really quick. And there it is. It's actually etched into the glass and looks really good. So yes, it can engrave into glass. That's a success. Alright, let's try something even a little bit more strange. A Triscuit Cracker. It's about 3 millimeters in thickness, and I'm going to try around 300 millimeters per minute, and 90% power with 3 passes. This should be interesting. I'm going to attempt to cut Bigfoot out again. You can really smell this Triscuit burning. It's not burning all the way through though. It's a really tough Triscuit. So there it is. A little Bigfoot, but it didn't cut all the way through the cracker. So, this is a failure. Since the Triscuit was a bust, let's go ahead and try a barbecue potato chip using the same settings. Now this is going to be very interesting because the way the chip curves makes it impossible for the lens to focus accurately at all times. Wow. The smell is absolutely horrible. This is bad. At least it's cutting though. It's cutting through the entire chip. So here's the chip, and it's a success. 
Bigfoot has been cut out. This could be the most elusive and sought-after chip on the planet. Give me that chip. No, sir. Earlier, we cut a Twinkie box. Now let's see if we can cut an actual Twinkie with this laser. I'm going to be using 300 millimeters per minute and a power of 100% along with 15 passes. This should be interesting and hopefully doesn't smell as bad as that Trisket or Chip. Wow, this is a smoking Twinkie. There's a burning smell with it. It almost looks like a burned sponge. I can't help but think that someone looks like they're trying to grill a Twinkie here. From the top, it looks like it's almost going through the entire Twinkie. But as you can see from the side here, it's not getting all the way through. Yeah, after 15 passes, I think it's safe to say this is not working. Let's see here. Definitely not all the way through, but it has definitely become segmented, and the parts just want to pull apart. It looks like it could go all the way through a Twinkie if it weren't so moist. So, using this laser cutter to cut a Twinkie was a failure. Alright, so the Twinkie was a bust. But what about using a banana at the same speed and power, but doing 25 passes? I'm going to use that same W shape pattern, and let's see what happens. So far, it's scoring the banana. After some of the previous results, I think it's highly doubtful that this thing's actually going to be able to cut all the way through a banana. Of course, as it cuts, it doesn't have the foul odors like the Trisket, Chip, or Twinkie. That's good. It's definitely cutting through the actual peel because the lines are becoming wider. I wonder how much charring is actually happening to the banana inside, not just the peel. Alright, after 25 passes, let's look at this thing. As you can see the cut lines here on top, but looking at the sides, it's very clear it didn't cut all the way through at all. Not even attempted to. Let's see how well it breaks apart. Well, it's a clean break, but not all the way through. Needless to say, this laser didn't make the cut for the banana. Alright, let's do just one more. I'm very curious to see if this laser can heat up a cup of tea. I'm going to do 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power and 80 passes. Now before I start this one, let me explain why I want to try this. When I was a kid, I saw a G.I. Joe cartoon that shows the Dreadnoughts heating up a pool with their laser guns. It up. We want to be sure our Joe Gooses are properly cooked! <laughs> So let's go ahead and pour some water in the mug. Get it all the way under the surface. And sit back and wait for some hot tea. Well, it's taken an hour. Let's see how our tea is doing. Judging that I don't see any steam, I'm guessing it's not very hot. Nope. Doesn't seem like it changed at all. Another fail. So what have we learned from all of this today? Probably that a laser won't become a household appliance for food prep anytime soon. And so, that's it. That's the $300 laser from Wish. The Atomstack A5 Pro 40 watt laser cutter slash engraver. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them below. And as always, I thank you for watching.